right, in this video, we're going to talk about muscle fiber types. And I'm going to give you a very general overview in case you've never heard of muscle fiber types. So we have slow twitch. I'll abbreviate that with ST. So if you see ST again, I'm referring to slow twitch. And then we have fast twitch. Now remember, this is a general overview. I'm leaving out a lot, especially when it comes to fast twitch muscle, just so I can give you a basic understanding before we get a little bit more in depth on muscle fiber types. So there are some intermediate fibers in between these, especially when we're talking about fast twitch, but I'll talk about that in the next video. So with slow twitch, you'll hear them referred to as type 1 fibers. And with fast twitch, some sort of type 2. And when I say some sort of type 2, there are different Type. So we have type um, 2A, type 2B, type 2X, and that's what I was referring to when I was talking about intermediates. But let's just keep it simple right now so that you can have a good handle on these types of muscle, muscle fiber types. And so let's link these to energy systems. Aerobic oxidative. And then this one would be linked to the ATP CP system. So if you've seen some of my videos in the past, we talked about energy systems. And uh, here I'm just trying to link them. And if remember, we also talked about glycolysis. And so glycolysis would be linked to those intermediate ones. But we won't talk about that right now. And so if we want to link these to health related components, then we would have cardiovascular endurance here and we would have muscle strength here and we'd have muscle endurance here in the middle if we were talking about the other ones. So let me give you an event. So a marathon would be a, a good example of slow twitch muscle fibers. You would need a lot, a higher percentage of slow twitch to do well in a marathon. And for fast twitch, let's Keep it with track and field and go with sprinting so you can compare, compare some of the similar events. Well, I shouldn't say similar. This one is all about explosiveness, even though it does involve running. And this is moderate running over a long duration. So long duration, um, moderate intensity, high intensity, short in duration. So that's probably the best example I can give you. And muscle fiber type has a big genetic component like certain in individuals have a higher percentage of slow twitch and some individuals have a higher percentage of fast twitch so somebody that was an ectomorph will have a higher percentage of slow twitch somebody that's more of a mesomorph well they have a lot more muscle mass and they tend to have a higher percentage of fast twitch, that big bulky muscle. So uh, the best example I could give is I'm more of an ectomorph. I'm pretty tall, skinny, but I have, I have a fair amount of muscle mass. I tend to be over here in more of the muscle endurance category using glycolysis. So I, I kind of I have a higher percentage of a different type of fast twitch that shares some common characteristics between the two. But just to talk a little bit about genetics, you have some individuals that are just built for running a marathon. And so if you compare them to Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes, these people could lift weights and do the, all these um, weightlifting exercises and get bigger, but they'll probably never be as big as Arnold is, even if he didn't touch a weight. So my comparison is, yeah, I have a little bit of muscle mass, but I have to do a lot of training to get it, and I'm still not anywhere close to somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So yeah, I might be able to get as large as Arnold Schwarzenegger, but if he ever touched a weight, he would, uh, based on his genetics and having a high percentage of fast twitch, um, he would outdo me. So here's a little chart that'll kind of sum that up. 
So here's muscle fiber type and size. And so yeah, I might start down here and with a little training I might get here. Well, Arnold without training, he's already here. So if he ever touches a weight, he's going off the chart. So he's just got a high percentage of fast twitch genetically. So that's a basic explanation of muscle fiber types is you have slow twitch, fast twitch, and you have some different fast twitch intermediates in here that are a combination of these two. And we'll talk about that in a future video. The last thing I really want to talk about, and this is something that, that made a lot of sense for me, is when I was learning muscle fiber types, one of my instructors talked about the chicken example. And you're like, chicken, how does that have anything to do with muscle fiber types? Well, it's probably one of the best examples if you're just thinking of it in a general, if you're trying to classify muscle fiber types generally, you know, just break them up into either fast twitch or slow twitch. So if you're talking about slow twitch, you want to look at the chicken's legs. And we're talking about farmed raised chickens here, not these chickens that are raised in, in these large industrial farms. We're talking about these are farm raised chickens that get to run around all day. They're not stuck in a cage. So if you look at their legs, it's all dark meat. So let's talk about the fibers being dark. So a lot of blood supply, that's the reason they're dark. There's a lot of capillary innervation, that's the reason they're dark. So a lot of blood supply. Or if you want to get more specific, capillary innervation. It's a lot of blood supply, that's what's making it dark. A lot of myoglobin in these. Also giving it a dark color. So chickens can run around all day. So hours. Can just run around for hours without getting tired. Alright, now let's look at the chicken breast. It's all white meat. So all white meat. And the reason it's all white is there's not a lot of capillary innervation. The muscle fibers themselves are large. They're huge, big and bulky. And the reason they're big and bulky is they need to store a lot of ATP in them. Chicken can't fly very long. When we fly for about 10 or 12 seconds, and then it fatigues, and then it has to land and start running around again. So that's probably the best example I could ever give you of fast twitch and slow twitch in the same animal. So if you look at slow twitch underneath a microscope, you're going to see reddish, pinkish tissue. And so the more slow twitch, the darker the color. So it's going to have a lot more redness, really sometimes even dark because of the myoglobin. If you look at pure fast twitch muscle, it's going to be white underneath the microscope. Maybe a little bit of pink, but mainly white. Because it doesn't have a lot of blood supply to it because it runs off the immediate source of ATP within, within the muscle. If you did a cross section of it and cut it in half, you're going to see large muscle fibers. So you, got, you can see the muscle fibers when you cut through them. And if you ever peel like a chicken breast apart, it's kind of stringy sometimes. You're just peeling large muscle fibers apart, whereas the slow twitch, the muscle fibers are going to be really small when they're bundled together. They're really small in comparison to the fast twitch. So there's probably the, the simplest explanation I could give on muscle fiber types. There is a big genetic component. We talked about that with my Arnold Schwarzenegger example. But there's also certain muscles, because of how much they're used, will have more slow twitch in them. And some muscles will have more fast twitch. This is the last thing I want to talk about before I wrap this video up. With these muscle fibers, we're dealing with the deltoid gastrocinemus, rectus abdominis, 
So they have a, a greater percentage of slow twitch, and that should make sense. With the gastrocnemius, you're walking around all day. Calf muscles are used much more than, let's say, quadriceps, hamstrings. I mean, they're being used, but not to the extent the gastroc is for you just to walk. And the deltoid is used anytime you move your arms. The deltoid's almost always doing something, so it has a higher percentage of slow twitch in it. And fast twitch. The gluteus maximus, quadriceps, hamstrings, those big bulky muscles, pectoralis major, even triceps to some extent, will have a higher percentage of fast twitch in them. So um, it's all the ones that you see. The largest muscle groups that you see in bodybuilders tend to have the greater percentage of fast twitch in them so like pectoralis major like I said gluteus maximus quadriceps hamstrings those are all huge muscle groups and just genetically even if you didn't train they're gonna have a higher percentage of fast twitch in comparison to some other muscle groups so I hope this kind of summed everything up for you and I, I hope you understand muscle fiber types the next video is gonna get a lot more complicated and hey, even when it comes to genetics and we'll explain those intermediate fibers that I was referring to the other types of fast twitch so I hope to see you in the next video